Hi, so today I'm going to walk through an example where we look at all the numbers in a file and we add them up, so we print up off their sub. Okay, so I walked through this example in class, but I want to go through it again <clears throat> a little bit more slower in the video so people can go through it at their own pace and pause the video whenever they like. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder somewhere. I'm just showing you for this example I'm going to do on my desktop, um, and I'm going to call this uh, sum. Okay, so let me type that there. How do I rename this? Okay, so this will be a summing example because I'm summing up a bunch of numbers. Okay, so I'm here, and uh, then I'm going to open up this folder in PyCharm. So this is where I'm going to put all my stuff. I'm going to open up PyCharm. I'm going to say open. I'm not going to create a new project because that often um, has some defaults you don't want. So I'm just going to open up the folder that's already on my desktop. So I go here and I go to desktop. I'm going to open up some. And so now I see I have this empty, empty project, right? So now I need to um, grab a couple of files from the web to complete this example. So I'm going to go here and then I'm going to go to resources and the, the slides for section one and two. And then down at the bottom, I've been posting a few code examples. I'm going to head over to GitHub. And this was all from lecture 11, the example I'm repeating. So I'm going to come here. And then there were two things that we need. First, we need a file with a bunch of numbers in it. So that's this file right here. Nums is for numbers.txt. It's just a plain text file, which means I can open it <clears throat> and see what's inside. And I see there's a bunch of numbers here. 11, 3, so on. Okay. Now, if I want to download one of these things, what I can do is I can right click on raw and I may say save link as. Okay. And then I'm going to go to my desktop where I had, had this example under sum. I'm going to put that there. So that's good. Maybe I'll open this up. And I see I have my file right there. So if I come over to PyCharm, now I can expand this folder and I actually see, okay, there's numbers, right? I see the same numbers that I saw online, 11, three, so on. Okay. So we need that. Let me head back to the website <clears throat> right here and I'm going to hit back. The other thing you need uh, for this example is this readnumbers.py. Uh, readnumbers is a module and in this class we're often going to be using modules uh, that provide various services for us. We're going to do that by implementing a bunch of functions. Uh, and often, as a programmer, you're going to be using modules with different functions where you know what the function does, but you don't really know how it works, right? So we're not going to look inside of this file um, because we're just going to use it, okay? So I have to click on this to uh, do download, but none of this code here will make sense to you, right? Because we haven't covered a lot of these topics yet. But I'm just going to come to raw, and I'm going to right-click on that. I'm going to say save link as, and I'm going to save that here as well. Okay, great. Now I can come back to PyCharm. I'm in PyCharm. I have these numbers. Now I also see I have this thing, which I can open, but I'm going to close it right away again because we're not going to care what's inside. And now I'm going to head down and I'm going to open up the terminal right here. And I do PWD to say what directory I'm in. I see I'm on the desktop and I'm in this sum folder, right? And if I do LS, I see well I have my numbers and I have this module. So the module name is just read numbers. Okay, so if I'm here, I could maybe also I could look inside of this. If I say cat, cat will read what's inside of that file. So I could say cats nums.txt. Okay, now if that doesn't work for you, if you don't have cat or maybe ls doesn't work, it might be because you're on a Windows computer and this terminal is running a shell that's different than PowerShell. If you're running PowerShell, uh, that'll work for you. But if you're ever in a case, you're on a Windows computer and something like LS doesn't work, the first thing I type is I type PowerShell right here. If I were on a, um, a Windows computer, I'd type that, and then you'd see that, oh, I'm inside of PowerShell, then things like LS will work. Now I'm going to type exit and go back because I'm not on Windows. I don't need to use PowerShell right now. Okay, so I have, I have these files. I have my numbers.txt. Right, and our goal is to add all of these numbers up. So we want to get 11 plus 3 plus 5 and so on. Okay, and so to do that, we need to be able to write a program that can grab these numbers from this file. Okay, that's what 
this read numbers module is for, right? Because we haven't learned about how to open files yet or do things like that. So I'm providing that code. So we could try to do an interesting program without knowing about how files work yet. So I'm going to type Python here in interactive mode. And I just want to talk a little bit about how this read numbers um, module works. So the first thing I might do when I'm trying to learn about a new module is I'll import it. So I'll say read numbers. And notice that this is the name of the file without the dot .py at the end. All right, so I can import that and that'll be fine. And then a function that I think is really useful to learn about is the dir function. So we're going to call the dir function. And then for the argument, we're going to do something that's a little strange and we're going to say what the name of the module is. So I'm going to say dir read numbers. So you'll use this a lot whenever you're trying to learn about a new module. Right, hit that. And this will show me all the things that are inside of read numbers. Okay. Now you see a lot of things that begin with underscore. Uh, and we're going to ignore all that. Usually when you see something in, uh, that begins with underscore in Python, it means you're not supposed to use it. Okay, there's going to be some exceptions to that, but for now we want to ignore that. And what we really see is that there's three things that we probably want to use inside of this module. Okay, so let's say I want to learn about how get next works. Um, I could say read numbers. This is the name of my module that I imported. And then I say dot. And then what I see here is that inside of read numbers, I have get next. So I'm going to say read numbers dot get next. I'm just going to hit enter. So I'm not calling it or anything. If I were calling it, I'd have to say something like this with parentheses and then some arguments inside. But if I just do that, I see, okay, this is just a function. And once I have a function like that, so I'm hitting the up arrow key to go back to what I previously typed. So I have a function like that. I can find out sometimes what it does if I say dot underscore underscore doc underscore underscore. So this is for documentation, right? So the combination of dir and doc like this will let you um, learn a lot about what different things do. Okay, so get next when we call that returns the next integer from the open file, <clears throat> or it's going to return none if there are no numbers left. So what is this open file that they're talking about? Well, in our case, the file is going to be nums.tax, which I'll open up up here. Right? So for example, what I want this to do is I want to call get next. And the first time I call it, I want it to give me 11. Then let's say I call it again. I want it to give me three and then so on. Okay. Now, before I can do that, um, there's this open file function, right? See that it says open. So just to kind of set everything up, we have to call open file before anything, right? So I'm going to talk and look at open file and don't worry about the, the specifics here, right? Because this, this is just a module that I made for this example. Um, you're going to encounter other modules in life, right? So maybe you won't ever use this module again, but I'm trying to give an example of how you can learn um, what a module does and then use it. Okay. So I'm going to look at open file, right? So inside of read numbers, there's a function called open file, and I want to see the documentation for it. Okay. And I see that when I call it, I need to give it, um, it needs a parameter. So I need to pass in an argument that's a path to a file and basically just set things up. So you can then call get next to get numbers. Okay. So I'm just going to call that right now. So I'm hit up arrow key. So which was what the previous thing I typed. And now I'm going to just backspace this up because I don't actually want to look at documentation anymore. Um, I actually want to call it. I call it like this. And I can see from the documentation that I have to give it something, right? So I need to call it and I have to give it something here. I need to give it a path. And the path I want to give it is this nums.txt. I want to tell it where my data is. All right, so I'm going to say nums.txt. And, and a path is just a string. Okay, so I'm just trying to do that. And now I can actually call this get next function. All right, so I'm going to say, uh, oh, let me do this. I'm going to say get next. And this is going to return 11 because that's the first number in my file. All right, so I'm going to run that. Oh, and my mistake. So it's saying there's a name error. And the problem is that get next is not defined. Okay, the problem here I have 
is that get next is inside of the module. It's inside of this read numbers module, right? So my bad. So I, at the beginning of this, I'm going to go back to this previous slide. I'm going to go to the beginning and I'm going to type read numbers dot get next. And now it should actually give me 11. Okay. And if I, if I, I'm going to hit up arrow key to have my previous study typed, right? So it's asking me what I want to type next. And I say, I want to start from what I previously typed. I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to hit enter and now I get three. Okay. So I'm going to do it again. I get five and so on. And let's keep doing this two, three, three. And let me come up here and I'm going to scroll down. Okay. Uh, nine, eight, and now I'm at the end. So when I try calling get next this time, it's not going to give me anything. Okay. Because I'm at the end of the file. Okay. So this is a good point to switch. I've been doing a lot of things in interactive mode just to show you how these functions work. Okay. So now I actually want to write a program that will do all of this, right? So maybe I'm going to create a new file and maybe I'll copy some of this code from down in this area where I've been kind of experimenting. I might put that in my file, right? Like kind of my experimentation is going to inform the actual program I'm going to write. So I'm going to come up to uh, sum here and I'm going to right click. I'm going to say new Python file and I'm going to call my program sum.py. So I have an empty file here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, scroll up here. I'm going to scroll down and see how I started before. And I see I started before by the first thing I did was I imported this read numbers. So I'm going to copy that and do the same thing up here. Okay. Now I'm going to call what I did before, which I'm going to call the open file. So I'm going to copy and paste this. Like so. Okay, so far so good. And then I'm going to come down here and I, I you see I call it next a bunch of times. Okay. And so I'm going to do that up here too. I'm going to get next a bunch of times. I'm going to get next, get next. Maybe I want to do that, let's say like 10 times. Okay, now let's try running this. And so to run it, I have to get out of... <coughs> I have to get out of interactive mode, right? I know I'm inter interactive mode because I have these arrows here. So I say exit like that. And now if I want to run this file, I see the name of the file is sum.py. So I run it and I say python sum.py and it actually does nothing. And the reason is that when I'm in inter interactive mode, if I see this, if I see these arrows and then I type something, is try to run that function and then put off the return value. In contrast, when I'm in script mode, if I just call a function, I get a return value here, but it doesn't go to the screen by default. If I want it to go to the screen, I have to say print. So I have to say print here like this, and I put that whole thing in parentheses. Let me delete all this afterwards. I want to print it a bunch of times. Okay. Okay, so I have a bunch of prints, so I'm just importing the module. I'm opening a file, and then I, a bunch of times I call this get next function to get a number from nubs.txt, right? So it should 11, 3, and so on and so forth. So let me head back to the code. I'm going to run this. And let me expand this here. I see that it got the numbers I wanted. It got 11, 3, 5, 2 so forth from the stubs.txt. Then at the end I see it has 9, 8. In the last couple times it printed none. Okay, that's because there is no more data in this file. Okay, so we're going to eventually fix that. But first let me try to fix another problem. The problem I see here is that I've copy pasted a bunch of code, right? What if the file were what if I had a hundred numbers or a thousand numbers or a million numbers? I would get very tired of typing this again and again, right? So whenever we have repetition like this, what we want to do is we want to use a loop uh, to do it many times. Okay, so I'm going to 
get rid of a lot of this for now. Okay, and let me just run this where I'm at. Let me show you it once. I run that and it just grabs the first number. And if I run it again, it's always grabbing the first number. No surprises there. Okay, let me let me get rid of this. I'm gonna keep this around. I'm gonna make it a comment so I can come back to it later. But now when I actually run it, it's not doing anything there. So let's just review a little bit about how to write loops. Okay, so I wanna call this in a loop a bunch of times. Okay, so what, what I wanna do is I may say wall, and I may have some condition here. So I may come back and write something here. And then I may have some body, right? And a very common loop pattern is what we'll do is we'll have a, a counter variable or an iterator variable. So I'm gonna, that's often called i because i is for iterator. So I'm gonna say i equals one. And then the condition is i is less than or equal to, let's say five. And then after the body, kind of at the end of the body, we'll say something like i plus equals one. Okay, and then if you write a loop like this, so you'll write code that looks like this many times in your life as a programmer, and you'll put different things in the body, right? So if I write something like this, it will execute this body five times, right? So I kind of get used to seeing patterns like this. Um, you know, you should go through it slowly a few times to kind of think through what happens, but eventually you'll see things like this, and you'll just laser focus in on this body part, and you'll say, well, that runs five times. So let me, let me put something here. So I'm going to actually, I'll print hello. Okay, let me actually run that. And I see my program prints hello five times. Okay, I could change this. Let's say I made this three. It would print it three times. Or um, let's say I want to do something else. Instead of printing the same message each time, uh, I can say something like I, right? So then I'll show up because this thing is counting up. Each when I run this three times, and each time it runs, it makes I one bigger. Okay, so let's run this. I get one, two, three. Another thing to review: um, this is kind of a strange operator. All this is saying is that I equals I plus one. So let's run that. That's exactly the same. I get the same result. Right? So sometimes you'll say it, uh, say it this way. If, if you're trying to um, not type as much, you might type it the other way, but both work just fine. Okay, and now I can really make this number as big as I want. I can make it a thousand. And I could run that, or we can make it a million. And you see it takes a little bit longer to get there. Um, the bigger it is, the longer this program is trying to run. All right, so we'll just wait, wait for this. You can see like we're in 400,000, 500,000. So we're about halfway there. Okay, so we got up to a million. So let's say I actually want to print off these numbers now. That was our original goal. Um, before, remember, I had copy pasted this line of code here on line five. I had copy pasted that 10 times. So now would be a good thing to do is I may, I may cut this and Remember that often, you know, we'll have a loop that looks like this, right? Where we're doing something a set number of times. And then the thing we're doing is, is this body right here. All right, so I'm gonna paste this. So then I'm gonna paste, um, uh, you know, this thing that's printing the next number. And instead of um, 100 times, maybe let's just do 10 times. Okay, so I'm gonna try running this. And this is looking pretty good, right? So now I come, I'm going to come back to the numbers just to show you this again. So you now see that each time it gets the next number. You know, 11, 3, 5. And like before, when we get to the end, when we get to the end, it's printing none because there's nothing left. Okay? Now, a lot of people, when they see this problem and they're new programmers, they want to fix that. And the way they might try to fix it is they might come back here and they say, well, you know, if I look at numbers, there's only eight total numbers, right? You can see that the last line number is eight. And so they might say, well, this is an easy fix. I'll just type eight here. 
right? And they run that program, and sure enough, that looks good, right? And it prints all the numbers, but it doesn't print anything at the end. Now, this is an example of something that we call hard coding. Hard coding is where you just take an exact number that you happen to need, and you plug it into your program. Okay, I don't, I don't like hard coding, and the reason why is uh, it makes it so your program only works with one input. Okay, so it works now, it works fine. Uh, but what happens if I add some more numbers at the end? If I add more numbers at the end and I run this, it doesn't print them, right? Or what if I delete a few numbers? I have a smaller file, and then I run this. Oops, excuse me. So now I only have five numbers. If I run this, now it prints not a bunch of times at the end. Okay, so this is bad code. I don't want to put in an exact number because then my program won't work if some files change, right? I want my program to always work. Okay, which brings us to another kind of loop. Um, often instead of, here we have kind of a counter loop, right? We, we do something a specific number of times. And there's a couple ways I could solve that. Maybe I could, um, maybe somebody gave me another function that told me how many lines there are. Um, your project is kind of like that. In other cases, um, people will provide a function that lets you check whether there's more data. Okay, and in this case, I happened to do that. When I was writing this read numbers, I created a function called not get next, but has next. Okay, so let me actually try calling this. I'm gonna try calling this inside the same loop body. So right before get next, I'm gonna call has next. So I, <clears throat> I first call has next, like so, and then I call get next. Let's just see what that does. Okay, so let me head, head up here. So I see it's returning. So let me make this a little bit more clear. Uh, so if I want in my print, I can put multiple arguments. Let me put another argument like this. And then if I run this, let me run this again like so. Now you say has, it prints has like this, and then you can see that the next thing it prints off for that, separated by a space, is whatever happens when we ran has next. So I can see it's true. So I can see that this function is returning a, a Boolean, right? And let me let me put this down here too to just make this very clear. So I'm gonna say get, right? Because here, when I call has, that's has. I call get, that's get. So let me try running this. And let me go through this again. So I'm going to switch back now to this numbers.txt, and I see 11. So first I see that it has the next number, and then I can get 11. Then it has the next number, and I can get 3. Then it has the next number, and I can get 5. Then it has the next number, and I get 2. All right, so I'm here so far. And then it has the next number, and I get 3 right here. Now I actually see false here, so it doesn't have another number. So it's warning me, hey, I don't have any more numbers. And sure enough, even though it tells me I don't have more numbers, we try getting it, and then it says none, right? So this switching from true, true to false warned us that we were at the end. And what we want is then we don't want to, we want to stop right here. As soon as we see this is false, we want to stop. Right? So as soon as we see this is false, we want to stop, which is the same as saying that only when this is true do we want to run this code. Okay, so I'm going to change this slightly. I'm going to grab this part. And remember, I had a condition here. Before my condition was used to make sure I do this exactly eight times, I had a condition. And in this case, my condition should be either be a, it should be a Boolean, it should be true or false. And I see that has next is a Boolean, right? It's a Boolean I care about. So I'm gonna put this here, just like so. Okay, now let me run this. And what I see is that now, 
So I got three, and then it stops. Right, so right after it dot three, so this was the last time it got a number. So what happened is we were running through this code, right? We're coming through here. This was true, right? So as this was true, it printed this. Then I got three, which did this. And then I, I made I one greater. And then I came back here to the top. And then this returned false, right? Because there's nothing after three, which means I ran to the end. I ran past the end of all this loop body. Right, so it stopped doing anything. That's when the program stopped, which is really nice. Right, so here I see that I have three as the last number, and when I run it, I get three as the last thing. Let's say I added another number, 45. You see after three, it does 45. Right, so this is a nice way to write this code. Now, before I was counting eight times, and now I'm not really counting anymore. Right, so I don't, I don't even need this. I could keep it if I wanted to for convenience, but I can really get rid of this. I'm not using that iterator variable anymore. And I can even make this a little bit simpler if I want, right? I don't need to print all of this every time, so I'm going to delete this too. And maybe I'll just leave it like this, right? So now I'm back to a pretty simple program. And basically I'm saying, hey, as long as you have another number, let's get another number and print it. Right, so I'm going to run this now, to show a simpler version. Right, so I get 11, 3, 5, 2, 3, 45, which is exactly what we have here. Okay, so we've seen how we can get all the data, right? We can get all the numbers from this file. Now what I want to do is I want to add them up. Okay, instead of just getting it, I, I want to add them up. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to put this in a variable first. So let's just put this in a variable. So I'm going to get rid of that. And so above here, I'm going to, maybe I'll call my variable x, right? So I'll do this. And then down here, I'm going to say get x, right? So as long as I have another number, while I have another number, get another number, put in x, and then print that, right? So I do that. So when I run this, I still have my same numbers, 11, 3, 2, uh, 3, 45, so nothing really changed. And, and often when I'm writing code like this, and I'm, I'm let's say I'm trying to debug and understand what's happening, um, I might in my string actually put something that looks like code. So I might here say something like x equals, right? I mean, I can put whatever I want in this string, but if I put x equals here and I run it, then I get something that's very nice, right? I get something like x equals 11. So I can see, and maybe I'll put a little space here. Uh, again, x equals 11, x equals 3. So each pass through, I know what I have. Right? Okay, now we want to add all these things up. And we're going to need a new variable for that. So I'm going to say total. And the total is going to start at 0. And what I want to do is I want to say total equals total plus x, just like so. And then at the end, I'll actually print this off. I'll print, well, first I'll just print the total, just like that. And we can make this better over time. So I'm going to run this. And I actually, sure enough, I get 69. Let me check if that's right. So I'm going to come here. One of the things you can do is you can Enter interactive mode in Python like this. And you can just type expressions. So I think like a good way to practice with Python is whenever, whenever you need a calculator for anything in life, uh, try doing your calculation in Python. So I'm going to try adding up these numbers. x equals 3. So I'm going to say 11 plus 3 plus 5 plus 2 plus 3 plus 45. And that's 69. So I see that my program is doing the correct thing. Let's come back and look at this code again. So I could um, do a few things here. One thing I might want to do is I might want to see um, uh, how x is, uh, or how the total is working up towards that final answer. So instead of just printing it at the end, maybe I want to print it each time. So I'm going to say, so far we have 
then I'll say total. Okay, and so if I type Python here, I'm gonna say Python sum.py, and oh, I got this syntax here. I, I often see people doing this, and the, the confusion is that running something like this is something you run when you're either in PowerShell or you're in Bash or some other shell, right? Currently, I'm in Python mode, I'm, so it's, it's expecting me to type Python code, and this is not Python code, right? So what I'll have to do is I'll have to exit first, and then I can actually say Python sum.py, and then I have what I was hoping for, right? I can see that it, it kind of counts up. So I, x is 11, right? So uh, as I, what, I, what I'll often try to do is I'll try to show what it's printing off and then show where that was printed. So that was printed by that. Then so far we have 11. So total started at zero, and then I said total equals zero plus 11. So that makes sense. So far we have 11. That's good, right? Now I come through again. That was printed by here. The second number was three. Now total equals total plus x. That, that breaks down to total equals 11, right, from last time, plus x, which is 3. So it's going to be 14. So I come here. I was trying to say so far we have 14, right? So you can kind of see how this is all counting up, right? Now let me try to simplify this a little bit. So we have lots of extra code. Um, and this makes sense. As you're writing um, programs, I suggest you print a lot of things so you can kind of see what's going on. When you're done, you probably want to clean it all up. Right? So I'm going to do that. Just like that. I'm going to run this. And I see I just get the answer 69 by itself. Um, well, let, let's make this a little bit better. Right? So this here, this is a little bit ugly. Um, whenever I say total equals total plus something, I can just reduce that to total plus equals that thing. All right, let me just run that and we'll see if we get the same answer. Or uh, another thing I want to do here is when I'm uh, done, I want to actually print what this says, right? So there's two ways I can do this, right? I can say, I can pass two arguments to print, right? If I pass two arguments to print, it's going to separate them by a space, right? So it prints this which is here, and then it prints this, which is here. Now another way you could have tried doing that, and this, this won't work first, but here, since I don't have a comma, this is one big argument. Now Python will try to add sum with total and print that. So I'm gonna try running that. And this time I got an error. <coughs> so when I read these things, right, so here's the error. The error is between when I ran the program in the next prompt. So look at these things. There's a few parts here. I see that there's a type error. So it'll say the error at the end, and then you're going to see this thing called a traceback. Right, so first, the type error, somehow it's wanting, it's saying something must be a stir, a string, and not an int, not an integer. So what is that? So let's look at, go back here, and I see that, where did the problem happen? So, that's a, so this is what type of problem we had. And this is where it happened, right? So I see that the problem happened in a file named sum.py. Okay, no surprise, that's, that's the file I'm writing here. And I see it happened on line 10, which is right here. And you actually see that these errors, even though it's printing a lot of stuff, it's actually pretty nice. It copied this line of code for me and it said, hey, this is the problem I have, right? And so let's think about what's happening. What's wrong with this line of code? It's saying it must be a stir, not an int. Well, I see there's two parts here. I see I have sum and I have total. Sum is certainly a string, right? It's in quotes. So the problem is that total is not, not a string. That's what it's complaining about. So if I come back here, I can say uh, str like this, and I put it there. And this is called a typecast, and it's going to take total, and it's going to force it to be a string. So, okay, so now if I actually run this, I get the final answer I wanted. So since this is a video, we can kind of go beyond what we did in class as well. And, and so I think another fun thing to do is let's let's try to compute the average of these numbers. Okay, so let me, let me go back in Python interactive mode. 
and I'm going to hit up arrow key to type things that I typed before. And remember, this was the expression I typed to get the sum. And let's try to get the average. Okay, so I'm going to go here, and I'm going to divide this by something. And I'm going to divide that by, let me see how many numbers I have. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six numbers there, so if I type six, I get 11.5. Okay, so that means the average of these numbers is 11.5. How did I get that? I added everything up and I divided by 6. Let's look at our code. We're already, we already have the sum, right? So this total, 69, is all the things added up. I want my program to print the average. So I'll say, I'll abbreviate AVG. And I'll call this average. So I want to do this. Um, you see it's giving me an error because I haven't defined this yet. It's fine to write your code in an order that temporarily has errors as long as you fix it at the end. But if I want to, if I want to define this, I may have to say average equals something, right? So I'm going to say average equals. And then what do I want? I want the total divided by the how many numbers there are, right? So I already have the total. So I'm going to say total here. Just notice how I'm kind of working backwards, right? First, I thought about what I want to print at the end. And I just assume I have some average variable, and I work back. Well, how do I do that? Average equals total divided by this. This is the, the number of numbers I have. So maybe I'll call this count. Uh, count will be the number of numbers I have. Okay, but that's... That's not defined yet, so I need to keep working backwards, right? So I work from here to here, and now I have to define this somehow. So how many numbers do I have? Well, basically, uh, how many times was I able to get a number, right? How many iterations of a loop did I do? That's what I want count to be, okay? So just like we were kind of counting up individual numbers, I can just count them, say like for each number I'll count up one. So what I'll do here is I'll say count equals zero. And whereas the total is adding each number, I just want to see how many numbers there are. So I'll say count plus equals one. Okay. And let's try running that. And so maybe I'll also so I'm doing that. So this is how many numbers, how many times I was able to call this get next. Maybe I'll also just print what that count variable is, right? It's always helpful to print more things until you really understand what's going on, right? So I'll say count. I'll run this. So I hit the up arrow key, right? If I hit the up arrow key, it's like everything I've previously ran, right? So I go up until I see what I want. And now I actually see, okay, the sum of these numbers, let me come back to the numbers. The sum of the numbers is 69. If I add all these up, uh, there are six numbers, right? No surprise there. And then 69 divided by 6 is 11.5. Right? So you'll often write code like this. You're kind of uh, use loops to add things up, and uh, you can get various simple stats on that. And that'll be kind of a bread and butter of a lot of uh, more sophisticated statistics. Okay, so thank you. I encourage you to rewatch the video until it makes sense and pause it at any time you like. Uh, to think carefully about the code uh, so you can follow along if you want. Uh, remember that today I downloaded this nums.txt and read numbers.py from the website, um, which you should do. We didn't change those or anything. We don't have to understand them. Uh, what we did today is we wrote sum.py from scratch, which uses read numbers.py. Let me just, at the very end here, scroll up so you can see the entire um, sum.py. So if you're kind of if you're running into errors, you know what's happening. You could try to replicate this exactly. All right. Thank you. Have a good day.